Although it would be nice if CMOS switched from the high state to the low state instantly, it, it doesn't. There is a delay in that switching. We blame that delay on capacitances, the capacitance of the gates and the parasitic capacitance of the drain is what dominates that delayed switching speed. But that's a key figure of merit for CMOS because how quickly it switches determines how fast that particular CMOS circuit can do its job. And very fast microprocessors have done a very good job of switching more quickly. So here we have our inverter, which is the basic building block of more complex circuits. There's a PFET on top, the NFET on bottom, and the power supply voltage, which is this shaky V sub DD. And when it's on, there's this on current that, in principle, is going all the way through to it to ground. In practice, isn't, because at any given time, one of these uh, FETs is always off. There's nevertheless the potential for current to be flowing from V sub DD to V out. And the question is, what's at V out? If it's perfectly capacitively coupled, then in practice, no current will flow. And that's actually ideal because we don't want the CMOS to dissipate power. And we want the current to switch instantaneously. But if what's at the output is capacitance, you know there's going to be an RC time constant involved. And so this is how we model it. Here's the, the next gate. You never have a single inverter at ever. And you, you always have a chain of them. Uh, so here we have a, an inverter and here we have the next inverter and there'll be a next and next and next and the next inverter has its, its a gate capacitance, C oxide, and there's parasitic capacitance which is tied up in the, the drain of the, the first MOSFET as well as the metallic interconnects between uh, devices. But it's there and so these are the capacitances involved. If you try to change this instantaneously, the state of this MOSFET, this current is not perfectly blocked because when it switches from zero to on, it will charge these capacitances. And so there will be current flowing. And so that it will take advantage of that fact to figure out what that delay time is by figuring out what that, that current is. So this, these three capacitances go together to give an effective capacitance, which I'm just going to call C. And it's, it's an effective combination of parasitic and, and oxide capacitances. When I write C in today's presentation, I mean capacitance in farads, uh, not capacitance per area. Because then I'll say how much charge is on these capacitors. I'll say it's that C times this voltage, you know, with this output voltage, this is, which is reference to ground. If we're charging the capacitances by applying the, this current, pushing it through with V out, we have some kind of charge, and it's probably C times V out. And the question then is, how is the capacitance related to this current? The only reason actual current gets to flow through this PFET uh, as it turns on is because these capacitances are available for charging. And so the time rate of change of this Q is the current that is able to flow through the PFET, which we're calling I on. And so this current I sub on is C times dV out by dt, the, the time rate of change of that, which I'm going to instead write as delta V over delta T. And I'm just, actually, I'm going to write it as V out over delta T. Okay, what's that all about? I, you see this last line. I, I go from dV out to just V out, and I go from dt to delta T. So this delta T is the total amount of time spent charging the capacitances. And so the capacitors went from zero, at least if you look at the parasitic, it's more evident. It goes from zero to V out, and it does that in a time delta T, which I'm, I'm going to rename tau in just a moment. This is the charging time for the capacitances. Otherwise, more in more practical situations and on data sheets, referred to as the CMOS delay. If you have a single switching event, it's going to you know, go from an input voltage of, of zero, that is that input to the inverter is zero, and you're going you're gonna to take that input of zero, which means you have an output of V sub DD, and you're going to end with an input of V sub DD and an output of zero. 
that's what happens in a switching event. And let's define two uh, key times here, the, the pull-up time and the pull-down time. We'll talk about the pull-up time. As we switch from VN low to VN high, then the PFET has a pull-up time. It's the time for the PFET's V sub DS to rise from the zero that it was to begin with to V sub DD over two. That's halfway through switching. It's ultimately going to end up at V sub DD. And the pull down time is the time that the NFETS drain source voltage takes to drop from where it started at V sub DD to half of V sub DD. It's going to end up at zero. And these times are just that expression we just came up with. So now I'm going to, instead of delta T, I'm going to write tau sub P, the uh, pull up time for the, the PFET. And it's still C. And the voltage is going to is half of V sub DD. And the current we'll write as I on, on for P. Now what this I sub on really is, since the MOSFETs operate in saturation in a CMOS, they're either on full blast or they're off. We'll call it ID sat for the PFET. And the PFET and the NFET are, are never going to be identical. They are not going to have the same ID sat. And so we call that out. We, we make that clear. The pull down time for the NFET is same expression, but we have to use I on for the NFET. Otherwise, you know, the same thing's happening. So we have these two times. PFET and the NFET don't actually do their switching in the same amount of time. Usually what's done is the average of these two is taken, and that's referred to as the switching time. And so that's what we'll use. We'll use the average of these and call that the CMOS delay. So that if you take the average of those two expressions, you'll see that this is what you have. That's why it's a 4 and not a 2. We averaged it. So anyway, the takeaway point is that the CMOS delay goes as the effective capacitance of the, the next gate's oxides and the parasitics in the, the first gate divided by the saturation current of the MOSFETs. So it just as a general rule of thumb. So the CMOS delay goes as capacitance over the saturation current of the MOSFETs. So a larger saturation current, which from now on, when you're talking about a device, we'll talk about it as ion. For larger I sub on means you have yourself a faster CMOS circuit. And so that's a design goal. Design objective is to minimize the current that gets drawn during the switching operation. I'm not really saying the right thing here. I say we also need a small capacitance if we want a fast gate. I'd rather say we would benefit from a small capacitance in order to have a faster gait. We don't need it. There's a lot of focus on simply making I sub on as big as possible. But yeah, smaller capacitance as well will make it faster. It's just that the, the short channel design tends to demand small capacitances. And we try to make the oxide thickness as, as small as possible, which again uh, does not give you a small capacitance. So there's some design trade-offs that will, will come into play there. So I will uh, stop with that and we'll, we'll do a couple of example problems on CMOS next.